Welcome, my friends. I am in San Salvador de Noia, the absolute capital of Cava. This is a very peculiar denomination since it is not defined by a single location. Although 95% of Cava is produced in the Penedes region in Catalonia, it can also be produced in other regions in Spain. Known around the world, Cava is a sparkling wine made by the traditional method, also known as method Champanois. Although it can be made from Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, it is traditionally done with grapes autochthonous to Catalonia or Spain, Charello, Parellada and Macabeo, also known in, as Bura in some other places in Spain. If something must be known, it's the recent effort by the winemakers of the region to bring Cava production to the next level with an improved regulation, strengthening the standards of production. Cava originated in the area of Penedès, specifically in the town of San Salvador de Noia, which has earned the title of Cava capital. However, for historical reasons, Cava can also be made in other areas in Spain. The four of them are Contats de Barcelona, which includes Penedès, the Levante Zone, Vineyards of Almendralejo in Extremadura, and the Ebro Valley, including parts of Rioja and Navarra. Since most cava is produced in the Penedès region of Catalonia, we decided to visit this place to talk about it. If you have watched our documentary of the denomination of origin Penedès, which regulates still and sparking wine production in the region outside of the cava regulatory policy, you already know that winemaking in the Penedès region dates back to the Phoenicians in the 6th century BC. The roots of Cava can be traced back to Joseph Raventos, original owner of Codornu, who learned about sparkling champagne in visits in the 1860s to the region while showcasing his steel wines. He imported the Champanois method to Catalonia and started a centenary tradition after Philoxera devastated his vineyards when he replaced his old red grapes by those used nowadays in the production of Cava. Three of these grapes, Charello, Parellada and Macabeo, have dominated plantings in the region, particularly in the Alp Penedès and Penedès Central, and are the main components of Cava wine. We are with uh, Javier Pallés, who is the president of the denomination of origin Cava here in Villafranca del Penedès, and I have the pleasure to talk to him, and we're going to discuss a little bit of the characteristics of this denomination. Javier, muchas gracias por recibirme. Javier, thanks for receiving me. It's a pleasure to be with you. I wanted to ask you about the denomination. Going back in time, this started with Giuseppe Raventos, who went to France to help his wines and visit the French Champagne and discovered the sparkling wine. The phylloxera that stated his vineyards here in the Penedès and decided to make a sparkling. Can you tell me about this? The history is like you said. A local winemaker in San Sadurni. He went to France, Champagne. He saw the possibility. He liked Champagne wines. He learned the method and tried to reproduce it here in this area. This was earlier, but in 1872, it's when the first bottles got to the market. In 1887, as you said before, is when the phylloxera came. But they were prepared, as it had already affected France, and it was spreading into other areas. They formed the group of the seven wise men, they started planning and replanting with American rootstocks to avoid phylloxera. Phylloxera still arrived, but they were prepared. The denomination was not formed until later, 
1980, right? This is the first reference in 1957 by the Spanish government using the word cava for sparkling wines. But here it was sold as method champenoise. It was changed to traditional method and the name cava was adopted. And cava means? When you make the base wine, you then do a second fermentation, which is when the bubbles appear in the bottle inside the cellar. This is where the sparkling wine is created, the bubbles, and that appears in the cavas, cellars. How many wineries were then and how many are now? We are talking about a bit more than a hundred then. And now we have 380 to 385 wineries. Actually, the denomination of origin cava has become huge. If we go back to 1900, we should talk about 200,000 bottles sold, which is not bad at an international level. And in 2000, we had produced 200 million bottles. It was one of the three denominations of origin most recognized for sparkling wine as a brand, and this was a great success. The denomination of origin Cava is peculiar, as it is not a single territory, but it can be done in several areas recognized by the regulatory council. It is made in Rioja, Navarra, Extremadura, Valencia, outside of Penedes, outside of Catalonia. Indeed, you're now redefining these areas, using more beautiful names, Contats de Barcelona, the Ebro Valley, etc. Can you tell us about it? Cava is a denomination of origin. It means that it is delimited. It is true that the zones are not contiguous, but they are delimited. It cannot be done in any place in La Rioja. There is only one municipality in La Rioja authorized to produce cava. And this occurs also in the Basque country with another small municipality, another in Navarra. But those are municipalities that are delimited and have not changed. They have always been the same. Nowadays, where the consumer asks for the origin, it's important not only in the wine world, and it is something we are interested in. We want products that are of good quality, products that come from an area. We want to know where the product comes from because we then associate it to that origin. And origins have personalities, slightly different, due to climatology, soils, cultures. Then I want to know, and I want to know well about all of this. As a consequence, we have been defining the zones as they have always existed, with their singularities, and we allow the winemakers, for the benefit of the consumer, to distinguish the zone it comes from, so there is traceability. If I don't want to state the zone because it comes from several, then I don't have to put it in the label. I believe that we have advanced substantially. And your classifications, you have modernized according to the way other wine areas in the world are following and have created new qualifications such as Vinos de Guarda. Can you explain them? We have Vinos de Guarda and Guarda Superior. We have fragmented into two. The first one is Guarda. We call it Guarda on purpose because sparkling wine can be done in many different ways. Ours requires a minimum aging time. After the second fermentation, it must age for at least nine months. Nowadays, you find sparkling wines processed in one or one and a half months. Guarda Superior requires 18 months or more. These are the only two categories, Guarda and Guarda Superior. Within Guarda Superior, we distinguish between Reserva, 
with more than 18 months from the Gran Reserva, which is more than 32 months. And then we have Cava de Paraje, which are cavas specifically related to a singular plot or location. I wanted to finish asking about the current ecologic movement. You have adopted it very quickly. With some of your qualifications being already 100% ecologic, is this for the grape growing, for the winemaking, or for both? In principle, the winemaker in general, in the wine world, not only us, is not only adopting the ecologic approach, but also being sustainable. This is an aspect we are very interested in, as it all comes from the vineyards, from the landscape, from preserving all these. We are very sensitive to this. Currently, Cava de Guarda Superior, with more than 18 months of maturation, it must come from ecological vineyards. We have a plan for the near future for all to become ecological. Only the Guarda Superior is determined. Fantastic. I'd like to make a toast for you to continue to be so recognized internationally. Thank you very much. In this section, we will cover the specific nature of the climate necessary for the growth of grapes suited for the production of cava. And we will do it in relation with the climate, geology and soils of the Penedes region as the most representative region of the denomination. The climate of Penedes is Mediterranean, with mild winters and hot summers, a moderate rainfall evenly spread across the growing season. There are substantial differences between the coastal areas of the Vase Penedes, drier and hotter, and the inland zones of the Alp Penedes at altitudes up to 800 meters with respect to sea level, which tend to be colder, more prone to frost, and with a higher rainfall rate. The different mountains define a region of high diversity of terrains, aspects and altitudes that result in a varied system of microclimates. We are in San Sadurní Danoya. Uh, I am with uh, Alex Torrello, who is family owner and enologist of Agustí Torrello Mata, a very well-known winery making cava and still wines here in the region of Penedes. Thanks, Alex, for receiving us. We are in one of your vineyards. I wanted to ask you some questions to contextualize the wines you make here. What is your climate? This is a Mediterranean climate. We are in a valley close to the Mediterranean, this is totally a Mediterranean climate. Dry. With the climate change, we get less rain. Still, this is dry growing. There is no irrigation. Therefore, we depend on the weather. We have vintages with more rain, others drier. This determines our work in the vineyard. We are in San Marsal. Uh, in the Alpenedes, and I'm with Tony Rossell, who is the family owner of uh, uh, Uriol Rossell, that is a, is a winery where they do cava, uh, excellent cava, but also uh, still wines in the Penedes D.O. Tony, thanks for receiving us here. This is a spectacular place. We'll visit the winery later, but here you have one of your vineyards, a very old one as you can tell from how grown they are. I will ask you about the Alt Penedes, particularly about the south end, which is where you are, perhaps with less altitude than other zones. How is the climate here? Yes, we're at an altitude of 160 meters. We are in the middle zone of Penedes, very close to the sea. The climate is Mediterranean. The sea is only 15 kilometers away, therefore we also have a breeze coming from the sea. Do they bring humidity and some cold? Yes, it is a breeze that arrives all the way to Villafranca. 
This brings us during the summer some wind that cools the temperature down during the afternoons. Sometimes it increases the humidity, sometimes it decreases it, it depends. In this area, we have a substantial influence from the sea. The regions where cava is produced in Spain are very diverse. Even a high diversity of terrain altitudes, aspects and composition are found in the Penedes region alone, with soils made out of sand, clay and rocks. It is this diversity that allows several grapes to adapt well to the regions producing cava, including Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, the international varieties traditionally employed in the production of premium sparkling wines. We are in this area of Penedes, in particular the Alt Penedes, which is very mountainous. You have different aspects. Yes, we pass from 50 meters from sea level to the highest area, where we get to 190 meters from sea level. The climate varies a bit in those areas, but the climate in El Garraf and Penedes Central is pretty stable. It is a Mediterranean climate. Every afternoon we get the marinada, which is the breeze coming from the sea. These are optimal conditions for the growth of the wine. The vineyards are smaller here due to the orography? There are many small plots due to orography, as we have the mountains of Montserrat, but also due to cultural reasons. We have lots of small vineyards, Ourselves, we have 40 hectares of vineyards, then we purchase grapes from other growers. They have the vineyards and we try to convince the grower to grow the quality that we need. And we understand each other, we have a good understanding. For you to get an idea, the average size of the vineyards of our growers are smaller than one hectare. They are very small vineyards and very old, but they are very special. Talking about orography, this area here in San Marcel, in the middle zone of the Alpenedes, is more flat than, say, in San Sadurní de Anoya. Well, the Penedes is not flat. Yes, there are some flat zones because we are in between two ranges, the littoral range behind which is the Mediterranean and the pre-literal range in the north. All this was a big lake with water from the ocean getting here. Soils are clay and limestone, particularly limestone. The orography in our vineyards is flat here, but then there are hills in other places. We have different terroirs within our land. It may seem homogeneous, but it is very diverse. What are the characteristics of your soils? This clay and limestone. Lots of lime, as in the old times this was all a part of the ocean, all the way to the Montserrat mountains. Therefore the remains of fossils, fossils and limestones and lots of clay. Very poor soils. Consequently, it does not drain very well and we have to work the vineyard accordingly. This year we are fertilizing. We don't do it every year, only when needed. If it does not rain, we fertilize less. We use a mixed cover crop. One raw with cover and the next without. Every year we alternate so that we force the roots to dig deep. It does not rain very much. Last year was an extremely dry one. We did not arrive to 300 liters. These are sediments, they are sand, lime. These are sandy loams. Do they have good drainage? Yes, pretty well. Clay is what does not drain well but here it's not dominant. 
clay is common in other areas of Penedès, but in our area it's not dominant, it's not abundant. Ours are a little more fertile. We also have stone. The soils are deep. The vine roots can reach 8, 9 or 10 meters in depth. In this area we use a term. We want our vineyards to have saor. This is when the water is retained at a depth. It is very important to have rain at the end of the winter. March, April, May because the water reserve stays at high depths, not superficial, and stays there for the hard summers. In this section, we will learn about the viticultural practices associated to the production of cava, as well as the different grape varieties used. In the production of cava, the viticultural practices are strongly dependent on the grapes used, since each of them has different growing characteristics and require different levels of attention during the growing season. From early budding varieties like Charello, Parellada, Trepat, Pinot Noir and Subirat Parent, to those early ripening and first to be harvested such as Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Macabeo, the palette of colors for the winemakers provide an endless set of combinations. We will hear from them directly about this. To operate your vineyards in a strictly ecologic manner, can you explain what is this about in this area? Yes, this is the traditional manner. We started with ecological viticulture in 2012. We had to pass a conversion period of two years because the land had been working in a conventional way for many years. Synthetic fertilizers are completely forbidden, organic or of organic origin. From products that are also ecologically guaranteed, this decreases the nitrogen levels in the vineyard substantially. In transiting to ecological, you usually lose 15 to 20 percent of production because you cannot use powerful fertilizers as it was done before. After that period, the vine cycle auto regulates. Then, we do use phytosanitary treatments copper sulfate for the downy mildew and sulfur for the powdery mildew. These were the practices of our grandparents. The vine is very grateful. It is easy to do ecologic viticulture. Here we have the diffusers of sexual confusion to treat against grape moths. This was an invention that people wondered how it worked They told us that if we applied it, we didn't have to do other treatments. And this is what it's about, as it is a non-invasive technique. The only thing it does is to diminish the multiplication of the plague. We don't kill anyone, and we control a plague that was very important. Moths and what other diseases? Do you have fungus? I assume there is low disease pressure here. As I said, the vine is grateful here. We have the mildews from the pruning, moths, and basically nothing else. In the oldest vines, we do have wood diseases, but that is something you cannot do anything about. I am Manuel Quintana. I am an enologist. My job as technical director consists of caring for the harvest and deciding the optimal moment to harvest the grapes. It ends looking at the eyes of those who have just sipped a bit of cava to see if the work has been worth it. We 
We're going to touch a bit of everything in these documentaries. Why make him with the culture? In your case, to make 200 million bottles a year, you need lots of grapes. Not all are yours. Do you work with many growers? All from the Penedes? Our viticulturists are all from the Penedes. We use grapes, must and wine from others in order to be able to fill our cellars with 100 million bottles. We would need crazy installations if we had to harvest for 100 million bottles. First Anet is representative of the Penedes region. This is your nature. From fields so different in orography and with varied climatological conditions. I assume you will get grapes from all these different places. Yes, we get grapes from right on the edge of the sea all the way up to the mountains. From areas close to the mountains of Montserrat. Zones like La Acuña, Font Ruby, that are highest within the Peñeres. As mentioned, Cava has been traditionally made out of charelo, parellada and macabeo. Although other grapes are also allowed, including Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, it is worth spending some time to understand this tree. Charello is undoubtedly one of the white grape varieties with which Cava is most closely associated. Considered and autonomous to its region of origin, Penedes in Catalonia, this medium-sized variety with loose clusters and thin skin brings a structure to pr and produces wines with body and distinctive taste, calling Cava out from other sparkling wines made using the traditional method. Macabeo is the most planted grape within the Dio, Thought to be originated in Villafranca del Penedes, it grows in large compact clusters. Of thin skin, provides light floral aromas and balance to the wines and the potential to age. Finally, Parellada is a thick skin grape with the latest ripening of the tree, adapting well to the most elevated cold areas of the deal and provided structured fruit and aging potential to the end wine. When it comes to grapes, I understand that Sarello is perhaps the most representative of this area. You also focus on this grape, which becomes one of the main components of your Cava wines, right? Sarello is an autochthonous variety of Penedes from way back. Specifically, in our case, it accounts for 50% of our vineyards. We have old vines and younger vines for the different types of wines that we do. The climate of this middle area of Penedes, around 160 or 200 meters in altitude, works very well for Charello. It is a grape tolerant to disease. It is a large grape grown in not very tight clusters, with hard skin that maintains very good acidity. Here in Oriol Rosell, Aside of some rosé wines, 90% of our wines are from autochthonous varieties. We don't have much parellada. It is a high-altitude variety, and we only have a few vineyards down here, for some very specific coupage. The parellada is for areas in the littoral at 300 to 400 meters of height. It is always difficult to generalize. In the Penedes, we have a very stable climate, but very varied terrains. For example, in the zone of El Garraf, the soils are very rocky, with very good drainage and very poor. We have this zone with much more clay, and then we have the highest zones where we have slate and more mineral soils. Each variety has its own vegetative cycle and needs its proper soil and microclimate for example, Macabeo, which in our case is 40% of our coupage and we like a lot, is a grape with very thin skin and very tight clusters prone to botrytis if in rich soils and we need to control the yields very well. Sometimes we abuse of the term old vines. It is as in Spain we directly plant old vines. 
but it's true that old vines give you less production, and for some varieties it is very interesting, as for example Macabeo. It provides finesse structure. It does not lead to high alcohol, 10.5 to 11 ABV, moderate acidity. It is a perfect skeleton for a coupage of cava. Then we have Cerello. This is the Superman grape, providing body, structure and alcoholic graduation. It leads to very powerful still white wines. It's spectacular. You have a monovarietal of Cerello, right? And for the coupage for cava, provides body and structure. Then we have Parellada, which has been historically grown in the mountains. Our ancestors were smart. We grow Parellada here. It produces huge clusters that are just water with sugar. It would not give you anything. We look for that aspect that is more aromatic, more fruity, tropical, banana. And it gives still wines of maximum 9 ABV. But its acidity is important, leading to fresh wines. The beauty of Cava is that we use the coupage. A young Cava is not the same as one of Criantha. If you look for Cavas with more primary aromas, fruit, then you use more Parellada. A large Reserva has more complexity with secondary and tertiary aromas. It gives aromas of pastry, but not primary aromas. Then we will use more Macabeo and Charello in the coupage, and not so much Parellada. That's the beauty of playing with the three varieties of grapes that we have. Wine making production of Cava by the traditional method is a complex and laborious process. It involves many different stages, including the most representative second fermentation in the bottle. Cuvée, tirage, second fermentation, aging, riddling, liqueur d'expedition, disgorging, dosage. Out of this, riddling, a process developed by Madame Clicquot in Champagne, consisting in turning and shaking the bottles repeatedly to accumulate in the neck of the bottle the lees produced by the second fermentation, had to be done manually during weeks in the old times. Some producers still choose this traditional way, in spite of modern techniques capable of shortening this time to an hour. In this winery, we vinify our wines. We vinify absolutely all our wines. We never buy wine from outside. All the wine is elaborated in the property. We wanted personality in our wines. I am talking about terroir, about climate, about soils. But also important is how to ferment. We can let it ferment by itself. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes very bad. In the skin of the grape, you can find 70 different species of yeast. With different yeast strains, you will find good ones and bad ones. What we did was to select the best yeasts from our most representative vineyards. Then we have yeast for Macabeo, yeast for Charello, and yeast for Parellada. This will give more character to our wines, in a way that Macabeo tastes like Macabeo, Charello like Charello, and Parellada as Parellada. We are in the fermentation room. How do you do your wines? Once we have pressed the grapes, the must arrives here, which is where we do our base wines for cava, and also the still wines. Those are done slightly differently. First, we elaborate the base wines for cava from the earlier harvest because we look for grapes with higher acidity and lower alcohol potential, less sugar. Why? Because cover wines are lower alcohol and higher acid. Particularly because we have the second fermentation and it is important that they have these characteristics. The fermentation, the must arrives here. We keep them for 24 hours without fermenting, lowering the temperature of the deposit to get rid of the gross lees. After 24 hours, we raise temperature and start fermenting, which will take 10 to 12 days. 
We have the first wine made, and now the second fermentation. The second fermentation in the bottle is the traditional method. This method was created spontaneously by Dom Perignon in France. Once we have the basic wines, we bring the bottles here. We have added yeast and sugar, and we have closed the bottle with a crown cap. We add sugar and yeast that we have previously fermented in the pie de cuba, as we call it. The bottles arrive here and we wait for the second fermentation to occur. We lie the bottles here horizontally. The yeast inside the bottle eats the sugar and reproduces during some time until after a month or one and a half months, there is no more sugar. The yeast dies and deposits in the bottle. What has happened during the month of fermentation? The gas created the fermentation cannot leave the bottle. The gases are stuck inside the bottle creating an inside pressure of about 6 atmospheres. This carbonic is what produces the bubbles. The yeast precipitate and the alcohol level increases from the sugar that has been converted in a very controlled amount. After that we do the crianza we leave the bottles to rest according to the regulatory council, a minimum of 9 months for the young Cavas, 15 months for the Cavas Reserva and 30 months for the Cavas Gran Reserva. Here we go well above these minimums. We do longer crianza than mandated by the regulatory council. These leaves provide Cava with a special bouquet. The yeast degrades what we call the theotolysis process and they break down. And it gains complexity. That is why cavas of seven, eight, nine years are extremely complex, but we cannot drink all these. Here in Oriol Roussel, we clarify the bottles with a pupitre, around 14,000 bottles every day. Imagine 14,000 bottles each day by hand. How is the process? We turn every bottle a bit. Every day we place the bottle a little more vertical. This way, the leaves which have been here seven years, five, four, we keep moving and they go to the neck of the bottle. In about seven to eight days we have all the bottles in this position and all the leaves in the neck. You can see here how they go down. Once the process is complete, you need to take the lease out. Exactly. We then move all the bottles from here to upstairs by an elevator. And once they have completed the riddling process, they go to be disgorged. This is when we take the lease out. We freeze the neck of the bottle in a deposit with a specific ice, with liquid at minus 25 degrees C. The liquid with lee in the neck gets frozen, a machine opens the cap and the inner pressure displaces the lees out of the bottle. Then we close it with the cork and we add the morion to prevent the cork to be expelled due to the six atmospheres of pressure. We clean the bottles, apply the labels and leave them resting for 15 days before hitting the market. What is your production? Here we produce around 100 million bottles annually and we have a stock of approximately 140 million bottles. 100 million bottles at a given time? Exactly. Resting, fermenting? Between fermenting and raising. How do you handle such a production level? We can't walk along here. These tanks hold 600,000 litres, right? 
Yes, each tank holds 600,000 litres, approximately, to fill more than 800,000 bottles. It is simple, a question of adapting the production to the scale. In the end, Freixenet started from scratch, started with a few bottles and has been adapting to the increased volume. But the essence is the same. The must ferments here as it would in a deposit of a thousand litres. It is essentially the handling of the must and good control of the yeast. What has evolved the most is making use of the technology to ferment at low temperatures in order to preserve the aromas. There we get to what characterizes you, technological research applied to the production of wine. Here you have robots, you have the gyro pallet, invented by a Catalan. Can you explain this? Yes, in the end, the essence of Carver is the same. We do the wine in exactly the same way we did 100 years ago. We press the grape and we ferment it. We add sugars to the resulting wine and we let it ferment again inside the bottle. Nothing has changed. What is the difference? Not the essence, but the technology necessary to accompany this essence to work at the volume that we handle. That is the case of Ritalin. Instead of doing it by hand, which took 20 days or 30, now you do it with these gyro pallets governed by a computer. How long it takes now? One hour. Traditionally, the riddling was done in bottle racks by hand, and it took 21 days. And you needed as much labor as bottles one person could riddle during a day. Note that we can produce up to 800,000 bottles per day. If we had to come back to the past and have to riddle 800,000 bottles daily, we would need a space equivalent to 200 football pitches and the corresponding number of people to do it. Manel, we are in your laboratory and this is because we want to talk about yeast. If there is a wine where yeast is important, this is Cava. As it must live during many months with the yeast during and after the fermentation. And this affects style. Exactly. Here we have part of our collection. They were selected 35 years ago from vineyards in the Peñeres. Yeast is always in the skin of the grape. Different grapes were selected and their yeast isolated from those grapes. Different criteria were used in the selection, particularly bouquet, aromas, flavours, but also resistance to the environment, the acidity, etc. They selected two yeast strains, the FP for the second fermentation, which is this one, and the F5 for the first fermentation. Each small white point that we have seen in the lab would be responsible for fermenting millions and millions of bottles. How do we do it? We take a small portion of yeast, which is conserved in agar, and we reproduce it. First at a very small scale in the lab with wine must, just 5 millilitres. Then we scale up to reach 200 litres. Then we bring them to these deposits, which is what we call Pie de Cuba, which stands for yeast growing. We need to produce a population of around 40 million bottles. This way, when we add 5% into these tanks, the mix would be of 1 million and a half or 2 million. Then what? We then add sugar to the wine 
and the yeast and quickly it goes into the bottle. In the bottle, the yeast will ferment the sugars and the sugar will decompose into ethanol and carbonic acid. The CO2, because the bottle is closed, diffuses into the wine during the whole time the fermentation takes place. And during the Criantha, the CO2 combines more and becomes responsible for the bubbles produced when opening the bottle. After the fermentation is over, without more food, the yeast dies and decomposes. Yeast is basically proteins, lipids in part. All these molecules, amino acids, start combining with molecules of the wine, acids, alcohols, giving rise to more complex molecules, esters, polyesters, terpenes, for example. Each of them provides a particular aroma from the criantha of the Carver wine. This is the deepest part of the cellar, where you store the first vintages of some of your wines. What is this? This is the first vintage of an iconic product of this house, the Reserva Real. It was done in 1982, and these are the bottles that we have stored it in since then, as it is a very special product. They are closed with cork taps, as it was done in the past. With the metallic staple. This is a part of the Kaaba which was dug into pure rock, right? Dug by hand in pure rock. This is the most historic place of the Kaaba. We call it rock mine. They could not dig beyond this point. Impossible, as it had to be done by hand. We are 12 meters below ground. Manel, another room with history. Here you stored the liqueur de expedition. It still smells sweet. Exactly. In the old times, the liqueur de expedition was done with wine aged in barriques. Those barriques were of chestnut, not oak. Traditionally were of chestnut. We maintain it to remember our history. Chestnut is started to be used in wine production again. Yes, history repeats itself. But these ones are empty. Exactly. You have the new ones in the other room, right? Yes, we have them there. We wanted to keep the tradition and we still have these bariques. They're called bocois. And it is where we store the liqueur de expedition for a special dessert carver that is called Malvasia. What better tasting than one of bubbly wines? One done with the producers of Cava. Here we are with your flagship wine, your very best Cava, Crypta, with this particular bottle. We wanted to make the best possible sparkling wine. We started with a design. Amphorae were the first wine containers used by the Romans. We want it to be like an amphora. Why? In the end, it is a matter of pressure. The Romans and Phoenicians ship their wines in ships. Recipients with flat ends are fragile and break. If you have more surface, it becomes more resistant. If you think about it, the standard bottle of sparkling wine is like crypta, but with the end bending into the side. This way it holds pressure. In addition, it has another advantage. We like Cava to be drunk cold. What better to have to leave the bottle inside an ice bucket to leave the bottle? Since our bottle cannot stand up on itself, it must go into the ice. Aside of this, Crypta comes from very specific vineyards, always the same ones. 
We don't make crypta every year. It depends on the vintage. Sometimes they are very good vintages when we elaborate a crypta with even more criantha. For example, the one we have now in the market is from 2013. It had eight years of criantha. Let's try it if you wish. Of course, I cannot wait. Also, the shape of the bottle helps during the second fermentation, when the yeast eats the sugar. In this bottle shape, there is a curious effect that makes the yeast to move inside, like an auto batonnage. Let's use this glass. Usually for cava, we use a standard glass, but for the Gran Reserva, we like to use them larger. Why? You know that you don't need to move sparkling wine to smell it since the carbonic expands the aromas. We like the glass to be a little closed on the top, to embrace the aromas and keep them inside the cup. There are people who miss the long bubbles that you would obtain with the old flute glasses. Here you don't see the bubbles, because it is a Gran Reserva. We should not be looking for an explosion of carbonic. It has outstanding aromas. Yes, aromas of cooked fruit, like marmalades. It reminds me of, of apple cake, like apples in the oven. Yes, even raisins. The carbonic is very well integrated. Why do we have such a long criantha? Because we like carbonic not to overpower the wine. The level of CO2 decreases during aging. It could lose half an atmosphere in five years. The level of CO2 stays the same, but recombines more with the wine, which is what we look for. It is like smelling a cake, very smooth moss. But it has lots of acidity and a long finish. It keeps going and going. As you can see, this job is very hard. <laughs> Fantastic, this is an outstanding wine. Alex, this is another. Gran Reserva en Parique. It is fermented in oak barriques. This is the only monovarietal that we do in the winery made of Macabeo. You can find monovarietals of Charello, but since we are in love with Macabeo, we decided to make this one. This comes from a single and very special vineyard. It's a singular vineyard? Yes, in El Pla del Penedès. It is more than 80 years old. Unfortunately, it's not ours. But we have a long-term contract. So that you don't lose it. Exactly. This is a Gran Reserva from the 2016 vintage. How long in barrique? Only seven months. Then Criantha in bottle. How long in the bottle? Five years. Know that it provides good carbonic. This is due to a protein in the grape. It possesses a species stones. The good thing is for the wood to be there, but not to overtake. It has acidity and power. Many enologists make great wines that they like a lot, but are you going to drink it? No. Here, the idea is that after one glass, you want to get another one. We are looking for freshness. Yes, indeed, it asks for another sip. You should tell us about this cava. A Brut Nature Reserva. A Brut Nature without dosage. Fully dry. It may only have a small level of residual sugar from the second fermentation. 50% Charello, 40% Macabeo, and a touch of Parellada. This is a typical coupage of cava, but always with Charello as the base. It is a cava reserva with three years of crianza. 
This is a substantial crianza. Let me know what you think. Looking forward to it. Small bubbles. Yes, that is important. Pale color. Nice color, without excesses. The color reflects the crianza. If it stays many years with the leaves, it acquires more color. If the cava is young, the color is paler. It integrates very well in the mouth. Beautiful. This is an example of an excellent traditional uh, sparkling wine that we call Cava in, in Catalonia, in, in Penedès, for about, I would even say, six times less the cost of a, of a champagne of the same quality. So just think about it. Don't go to Prosecco, perhaps, go to Cava. So you're going to have definitively a much better product than what you would have tasted. Well, so we're going to finish this visit to Freysenet with Jeff Bargallo, who is a sommelier here in the Freysenet group. And we have chosen two wines. One that is perhaps the most representative from Freysenet, with the black bottle. Everybody sees this everywhere, basically, in the world. And then another one that is a little more selected, qualified by a new qualification of the regulatory process. Um, let's go ahead. Maybe we can start with the black one. Okay, Enrique, it's a pleasure to taste uh, this uh, magnificent products uh, with you. And of course, we will start with uh, Cordon Negro, the black bottle that is our flagship. It's uh, sold, exported in more than 100 different uh, countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. The one in Freshnet is at 20 kilometers from the coast, from the Mediterranean. So we want to express the freshness and at the same time this uh, round style of wine. So it's, it's, fresh. it's fresh, it's very clean, clean it's round, it's gentle, ripe fruits. The Cordon Negro Brut is aged between 14 and 18 months. So we have a touch of uh, the yeast during the aging time, a touch of the mother that increase a little bit the volume and make it more tasty. Right. But it's still a, a, an easy drinking wine for yes. all times, right? At any, for any occasion, basically. And this is the range Elysia. Elysia, uh, it has been an opportunity uh, 30 years ago to boat a winery located in Penedès, surrounded by, uh, by Chardonnay and Pinot Noir uh, grapes. Mm -hmm. So this is only Chardonnay and Pinot Noir? Chardonnay is 40%. A little bit Pinot Noir, a 10%, and the blending is completed by Macabeu and Parellada Chuk. It's a Cava Reserva that belongs to the range Cubes de Prestige, so it's more limited production than uh, Cordon Negro. And here, with a minimum aging of 18 months, so we try to combine uh, maturity and uh, youngness. And it's a bit smoother, smooth. It's a little more elegant. And the acidity is very balanced perfectly. The ripeness of the wine, so it's elegant and perfect uh, to match uh, with food. Yeah. Well, Jeb, thank you very much for this uh, quick tasting of uh, these two wines. It has been a pleasure to host you. Salud. Salud. <laughs> Cava has brought quality sparkling wines to the table for a century and a half. Affordable options bring the traditional method to everyone's table. Super premium options sit at the table with the very best champagnes. Is there a cava at your table? I really hope so. Cheers. <laughs>